one of the best times of year is, you know, Oscar season, the award season. We get to sit yeah. down. We've, we've reviewed all these films, you know, and you have these these awards for best supporting actor, best supporting actress, best actor, best actress, you know. And, you know, we give out awards to them, obviously, because we know how important their characters were to the main characters, just what we're talking about. But do you think when we, at the end of the day, and, I, and I'm guilty of this just as anybody else, at the end of the day, do we ever give enough credit to the people that support us? Do we ever go say thank you to our parents? Do we ever go say, you know, to, mm-hmm. you know, even just give, give our pets a hug, like anything else like that that keeps us motivated throughout the course of the day? Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Shield of Hope channel. This is the Hope Speaks podcast. We have some very special guests today. But before I get started with introducing them, because they're going to introduce themselves, I want to talk a little bit about the channel, what we have coming up. So the first week of August is Shield of Hope celebration. Hopefully all you guys tune into that. If you're listening to this podcast, you're most likely listening to it on YouTube. But don't forget, we also have our Spotify account and we also have our Apple podcast account. So be sure to check them out. We also have our Shield of Hope website up. And we have some pretty big news to announce during Shoot of Hope Celebration, but we can't do that right now. So we're going to jump back to our guests here. First of all, introducing Ben, who's been on the channel before with Nim TV, but he also has a very another uh, co-host as well for the Waban podcast. I want them to introduce themselves. So you guys take it away. All right. Um, I guess I'll start. Yeah, I am Nim from the YouTube channel Nim TV. Yeah, I've been on here a few times. Um, but I think one thing that's happened since the last time, uh, I was on here is I started a podcast. Um, we're already, it's, it's a once a week podcast. We're already on episode 18, I believe. Um, we're about to record the 19th episode later today, actually, as we're recording this. Um, at least that's the plan. Um, but yeah, so it's. The podcast is called Waban, the Waban podcast. Um, it is me and my co-host here who usually yeah, goes man. by the goodest boy. Yeah. Um, he doesn't want to reveal his real name. So, you know, he's just kind of the man who can't be named as well is what we called him when Donnie was on our podcast. Um, but yeah, so we do. I mean, typically what we do is we talk about on that podcast, at least we talk about a lot of, uh, TV shows, movies. That's sort of has been the main, uh, discussions that we've had. So like, for instance, we, we got done talking about the entirety of avatar, the last airbender, you know, like 10 episodes at a time, we would like one episode would be this, you know? Um, so we finally got done with that right now. We started talking about Bojack Horseman. So that's been fun. We got through, we already have a, the latest one was talking about season uh, two of that. And then, yeah, we also do movies so you can go on there and see the movies. And we have only like so far, only two guest episodes. Uh, hopefully we'll do more episodes uh, where we just have guests on and talk with them. So, yeah, it's been going well. Um, we've enjoyed it a lot. Would you would you say you've enjoyed it a lot? Yeah, it's definitely been fun. You know, something to do at least. Yeah, that's 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 the the big thing. But yeah, if you want to listen to a band, um, I mean, you can listen on my YouTube channel, Nim TV. Uh, the upload it video versions of it there, and then it's also on multiple audio platforms: uh, Anchor, Breaker, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Radio Public, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. So if you just search Waban on there, that's W A B A N. You can usually find it. So yeah. Now, what got you or inspired you to be in the podcasting game? Have you always listened to podcasts? Because podcasts obviously have been around for at least 10 plus years now, but it's kind of it's kind of kicked up its game in, in essence. You know, when Joe Rogan has obviously gone big and all and all these other podcasters that are out there, I listen to yeah. Tim Pool, Tim Cast IRL. Uh, so there's a lot of different areas to go into, whether it's films, politics, etc. What got you guys into the game? Um, I mean, I guess I'll start for me. Cause I think I was interested in podcasts, you know, before he was, but, um, Definitely. so yeah, yeah. So I, I guess like back when I started YouTube, um, I, I listened, I found a few podcasts that I liked and I really was like, man, this, they seem like they're having a lot of fun. They're just, you know, having interesting conversations for people to listen. And I also kind of thought like it wasn't something difficult to do either. Um, 
And I was like, you know what? I like talking a lot, so why not? Um, and I, I have made attempts at podcasts over the years, some more successful than other, but this is the, the latest attempt is Waban and it's, it's been going pretty good. We've been consistent, a new episode every Saturday, uh, at noon Eastern standard time. You know, we've, we've been consistent with that schedule, you know, haven't missed one yet. Um, but yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I just always thought it, it is interesting though, like, I think the surge in podcasting has come because of how easy it is to produce your own podcast. You know, you just buy a halfway decent mic. You have a computer. There you go. You can have a podcast. You know, it's it's really easy for anyone to do. So I think that's a a huge part of that. But um, yeah, so yeah, um, I didn't really decide to make a podcast. Uh, me and Ben just worked together. We made cotton candy together for you know hours on end, and so we had a bunch of nice conversations. And eventually, he goes, "You know, I've been wanting to make a podcast. You want to? We have some pretty good conversations. You want to go on a podcast with me?" I'm like, yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah, that's 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 pretty much yeah how it is. Yeah, because um. Cause you, you don't even have, you've never even done any, posted any sort of content online until uh, nope. what band this, this is, is sort of your first ever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So how hard was it for you to match Ben's level of, you know, Ben obviously wanted to be the speaker. He loves to speak ever since mm-hmm. I known him going to college. He's always been the type of person to be very outspoken and just, just talk all the time. And uh, so, how? yeah, <laughs> I'm not taking a shot at you there. That's actually yeah, a good thing yeah. because that's that's kind of like me. But in essence, I'm, I kind of fall in the middle between both of you. Where I'm trying to figure out topics to talk about and I feel like I don't speak the right words sometimes. So how hard was it to match his level? And are you glad that you jumped into it or are you still trying to, like, find your way? Well, I think I'm glad I'm doing this at the very least, you know, even if it doesn't go anywhere, it's something fun to do and, you know get to have a nice conversation with someone once every week. That's nice. And you're probably seeing a lot of films too that you probably wouldn't have oh, yeah, seen otherwise. Oh, that's nice. Mm-hmm. But as for getting on Ben's level of talkativeness, uh, I don't think I'll ever quite reach there, but we've maintained a good balance in the podcast. The first episode was a little rocky as I got my bearings, but we've gotten better. Yeah. I think I think we... Um we we work off of each other pretty well at mm-hmm. least so far that's kind of been you know yeah well that's the most important thing too having that chemistry and i don't know you probably don't do your podcast face to face so you're going over different programs in order to like communicate with each yeah. other yeah. so mm-hmm. is is it different or is it weird for you guys to find like when people because this is the biggest thing when i start off podcasting was especially you know 2020 was the weirdest year in general, but it was a weird year to start podcasting. I did my first two podcasts. People came to the studio. We had a blast. And then COVID hit, you know, in February. And then, you know, ever since then, it's kind of been like online Zoom, you know, over over the phone type interviews. And so is it is it weird to kind of jump in? Like, do you guys have a feeling to where somebody's going to cut off now and when you should jump in and say your part? I don't think we've ever had a problem with that, as far as I can tell, at least. Yeah, I mean, for me, like, any, you know, I, I've said that I've attempted podcasting and, like, you doing just doing YouTube videos with other people as well, like, in the past. Um, and, like, I've always done it, like, online, so it's I'm just kind of used to it, Um I even did like a podcast for like the college for like an in, an internship and like all of that was like either over the phone or where, you know, wherever else that's uh, so like, you know, I've, I've been used to just doing podcasts online, not being able to see the person I'm talking to. So it's just completely normal for me. So I, I've gotten used to it. But And the program that we use seems to have very little delay. So that's all yeah. that helps. Always helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we are currently using a program called Zencaster for those listening, um, and it's if you if you want to record podcasts with more than just one person, you know, like online over the internet, uh, Zencaster is a great uh, platform to do it. So not sponsored, but you know, <laughs> uh, maybe one yeah. day, maybe one day. Yeah, yeah. 
So I'm I'm very happy that you guys went back and took my movie recommendation. I told you it wasn't going to be the best movie. It yeah. definitely wasn't going to be the worst movie. It was going to be somewhere in the middle, <laughs> you know, of good creative ideas yet bad execution. So um, anybody else wants to go check that out? We're talking about Jumper. Jumper was on their channel. But, you know, is, have you guys had any more recommendations that you're actually like upcoming um, podcast about movies that your your movies or TV shows? I think I see you're on BoJack Horseman right now, I believe. Yeah. Uh, as we speak. So. You know, what, what's the future of Wabam and what's the future of, well, what whatever you're watching? <laughs> so, I mean, currently the main, you know, so we, we always usually the way we've been doing it is like uh, we'll do every other week is a movie discussion. Every other week is a TV show discussion. So, like, we'll do one week. We'll talk about one season of. Like, currently it's BoJack. Before that, it was Avatar. Well, Avatar, we did half seasons because the seasons are longer than BoJack. But So, like, right now it's, like, uh, one episode will be a BoJack discussion, meaning the next week would be a movie discussion. The next week would be a BoJack discussion, you know, until we're done with the show. And then we would do another show. Uh, that's the way we've been doing it, at least. So far, It's the, we're only on our second show uh, since we started. But... Um, yeah, and then occasionally, instead of doing a movie review, we'll do a guest episode. So far, we've only had two, but we would definitely, we're definitely like going to be looking for more guests uh, in the future. Which I, I'm, I'm gonna go around and like try to. I know there's some people that I'm interested in asking and stuff, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, and then we're, I think we're definitely gonna continue doing what we did with you, which is whenever we have a guest on asking them for a recommendation of a movie to watch. Cause I think that's interesting just to, cause then instead of us just deciding the movies every time based on what we think of the movies, it's interesting to see sort of what somebody else will recommend and, and just kind of, you know, it could be something we both seen. We've never seen, never heard of, you know, you never know. So it's just kind of interesting. Um, But yeah, as far as like the current plans, I mean, Bojack Horseman, obviously, we're going to go until the end of that. Um, and then other than that, um, I mean, we later the podcast we're recording later today. Uh, we're going to be talking about The Dark Knight as far as movies go. Um, but yeah, beyond that, we don't really know yet. <laughs> we haven't like figured it out. Like I'm going to, you know, again, try to get guests on. And but yeah, so we just kind of plan as we go. I mean, I've known for a while that I've wanted to, I think you've said that you wanted to do this after we've gotten yeah, like a yeah. fan base. Oh yeah, I know you're going to say, yeah. start video games too. Yeah. Because then the dynamic switches. It's no longer he's the expert and I'm, you know, the audience surrogate. It's now I'm the expert and he's the audience surrogate and I yeah. get to watch him play and see him struggle with video games. Yeah, that that's true. We did talk about uh, potentially doing that, which that's actually another interesting thing is um, we would we were thinking about like that could be like a cool. Obviously, that would be something that would work better as like a, a video itself, you know, a YouTube video itself. So we were even thinking of like that being like a separate series that could be on like a Waban YouTube channel if we ever made a, a an actual channel, YouTube channel dedicated to Waban, you know, mm -hmm. as like just a group channel for the two of us kind of um so that, that's a potential um i mean we don't have any plans for it right now but it's just kind of like a thought in the back of our minds currently i have a few i have a few games that i want to see yeah 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 i think yeah. it would be good but you know yeah that would be interesting yeah mm -hmm. yeah because that's, always, I, that's oh, always something no you're good that's always something that i think as creators you know we're always looking above and beyond the, what's the next step um, how challenging is it for you? Did you always want to put it on NIM TV or did you want to make, Oh, a band channel right away? And like, what held you back from that? Or what, like, why didn't you think about doing that sooner? Like what's your perspective when you start creating this stuff? Um, so for me, I mean, the reason why I started by kind of just ho hosting Woban on NIM TV is really, I mean, I, it's pretty simple. It's just kind of the idea of like, I already have, us an audience a small audience but like an audience on nim tv so it's like kind of it just you know instead of starting from a you know youtube channel with zero subscribers it's kind of like oh yeah well i'm posting somewhere where there's already over 200 so it's that's i mean that's kind of the main reason 
Um, also, because like my YouTube channel uh, has not been very consistent. And I was like, you know, it'd be nice to have something that's like, so I have something new every week, you know, on the channel because it's I, I'm not as consistent on my YouTube channel as I'd like to be because, uh, you know, I've, I've been trying to put a lot more like time and effort into videos and like scripting and stuff like currently I'm working on uh, scripts for videos that I'm just taking forever to do. I, I procrastinate a lot when I write things. Um, and it's just, I was like, you know what, it'd be nice to have something that's kind of a little bit more consistent on the channel. So that, that's one reason, but yeah, also the, like, it's nice cause there's already a small audience there. Um, but yeah. I always find it fascinating when, of course, when you're a full-time YouTuber, you're uploading daily and sometimes three times a day, four times a day. Mm -hmm. Um, is that something that you both want to do one day? Like, you know, not, not saying you want to quit your jobs that you're at, but say, you know, like eventually would love to stay on this platform full time. I mean, for me, I know I would like that. I mean, I, my main career, obviously, that I'm uh, getting into is just video production in general. Um, you know, filmmaking is a big part of that, too. So, like, I think no matter what, I want to try to pursue filmmaking, which could just be you know a lot of short films on my youtube channel but um i i don't know if i would <laughs> if i ever got to the point where it was a full-time job uh, i would definitely be okay with that especially compared to what i you know what i do to make money now like i would prefer that but um i don't know that i would ever do like you know multiple videos a day necessarily it might be like it would definitely probably be more consistent if it was a full-time job you know like maybe a new at least one at least one new video a week that's not the podcast you know or whatever but yeah i don't know it, it's definitely something that i would be interested in like doing as a career if it got to that yeah um the thing is with me i'm in uh i'm majoring in computer science and the extent of my career plan at this point is basically you know eventually be a stay-at-home programmer and you know just send my work in to whoever i'm working for so you know uploading stuff and this and that and whatever that works out pretty well you know something fun to do on the side yeah yeah and, and kind of all those and what you're both talking about kind of like allow you to even be in this field where like it just like you know you can make these decisions you can make a video here you can talk about the subject here and i think that's awesome so here um here at shield of hope what we like to do especially with the host speaks podcast is we like to get to know you guys first so the first 17 minutes here have been just introducing yourselves but now i want to jump into more of a theme if i'm allowed to do that you guys cool with that mm -hmm. sure yeah. all it's right podcast <laughs> So I'm going to ask you, when I say the word main character, like a main character, what what do you think of when you think of main characters? Uh, they're, well, they're the main driving force of the story. They're important in, that can be in like many different aspects, whether it be, you know, in something like Dragon Ball where it's like strength, or it could be in something like a romance novel where it's like kindness or something like that. But it's, I don't know, it's a... Uh, I had a hard time describing it because it's just yeah. kind of like they drive the story forward in whatever the story needs in that moment. Yeah. Yeah. I would say kind of the same thing you were saying, like, oh yeah, it's, uh, the main character is the, is the one, yeah, who drives the story forward. So like the, you want your main character to be, um, not a passive character who just kind of like lets things happen to them. You want them to, you know, really, you know, you want the story to be like, Oh yeah, the, the main character is important to the story kind of obviously, you know, they're the main character. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if there's any specific like qualities of, of a main character that I look for. Cause it, you know, it really depends. Like you could have a main character who is the most terrible person in the, on the planet, but they can still be a main character, you know, like if it's, you know, it's like, I don't know, like, look at like uh, a movie like Goodfellas, right? The main character was like in the mob, in like the, the mafia and stuff like that and and, and whatever. And it was like so just like, kind of going through his life in the mafia, you know, based on a true story. But like, he's, he's not really a good person, you know, but like he's still the main character and that's fine. It works for that. Or like, you know, so I don't know if there's any specific like qualities. It's just... 
it depends. But then you have movies like um, Mad Max Fury Road are interesting because, like, technically speaking, the movie's named after Mad Max. But, like, is he really the main character? You know? Yeah, we've talked about it on our podcast. <laughs> or is the Furiosa actor, the right? main character? Yeah, Furiosa is probably more the main character mm-hmm. in, in Fury Road than, than Mad Max, you know? But like the story itself is about her, yeah. and he's just helping her. Right. I I think it's a very difficult thing to define, like, an exact sort of view on, like, what is a main character? Like, I think it it really depends on the story and, like, where you're going. It's like, you know, who is the number one focus point of the story i guess is what it is i guess that's you know who are we following who is the you know driving uh driving the plot forward i guess yeah it's it's a tough it's a tough uh when i say just a word main character it's kind of tough to describe isn't it Mm -hmm. yeah 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 So now i'm going to give you another tough one to describe i want supporting character um I mean, really, I mean, I, I guess that's anyone, I mean, it, I guess that's what it's what's defined as anyone who supports the story in some way, um, who's not the main character. I don't, you know, like, it's, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I have much more to say other than that. Like, again, <laughs> it could look like multiple different things that, you know, um, but somebody who also is important to the story and supports the story supports the main character or supports or just adds to you know whatever but like helps hold up the story but isn't the main character i guess is anyone anyone like that would be a supporting character i guess i'd yeah um i <laughs> everything that you're asking about so far is like the word itself exists as just like a a plot point or like mm-hmm. a, an item to be useful in making a story, but um. Well, do you, you know, know where in, I, does anybody know where I'm going with this stories, yet? Stories like. Well, here, here's a question, you guys. Do you guys know the third question I'm about to ask? Is it a villain or an antagonist? No, I'm actually done defining those because main character and supporting character are the two things I want to discuss a little bit today. But mm-hmm. what do you think is more important to the plot? Do you think the main character is more important or the supporting character? I mean, in general, in general, Mm. I feel like at the end of the day, typically the main character should be the most important. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily always the case, but I feel like, I mean, if you are the main character, I feel like you should be the one who's really driving the story more than any other character. Well, I mean, it, uh... so the main character and the supporting character to give examples it's like batman and alfred right who's more important now generally batman would be more important but no one's gonna you know throw out alfred you know he's an integral part of any batman story and he helps batman along and a lot of the things that batman does he can't do without alfred right so it's a very uh symbiotic relationship it is but would would batman be batman without alfred alfred took care of him i mean at the end of the day probably not right right Mm -hmm. so i'm again these are just opinionated questions because the main thing is i want to talk about and this got brought up a little bit with logan and this kind of gave me the idea i just had logan shikowski on last podcast and this had this gave me the idea to speak more about this you know everybody lives their life every day thinking that they are the main character of every story You know, whatever we do, we think we're the main character. Hmm. Yeah. You know, and really, probably only 1% of the human population around the whole entire history of mankind has only been the main character. I'd argue it's probably less than 1%. But what are we all? We're all supporting characters. From the time that, from the beginning of time to the time that humanity ends, we have all supported whether whatever the big narrative of the story is. So I guess to ask the question, do you guys feel like, people live their daily lives thinking we're the main characters and would we be okay with being the supporting characters? Do you think, do you think that's a concept that people are all right with at the end of the day? People or ourselves? Yeah, you could do both. If you have an answer for each one. All right. Well, I mean, I don't much enjoy the spotlight. You know, I got dragged into this and you know, it's fun, but not quite. (laughs) Got dragged into this. (laughs) Yeah, it's fine. 
But you know, so I'm perfectly fine being a supporting character rather than a main one. Yeah. I'm not sure many people would agree with me, but you know. Yeah, I, I feel like it definitely depends on the person. Um, but I mean, I know, <laughs> I know for me, I probably would uh, like when I'm in my own uh, head thinking of like my life and stuff, I would probably typically think of myself as like a main character more or less, like just kind of like, um, you know, but I don't know. It's interesting because it, it's hard to view it like that. Cause obviously, you know, um, in stories and like, you know, movies, books, TV shows, whatever story it is, it is, it is, the story is constructed in a way where there is a clear main character, right? There is clear supporting characters, but like, you know, obviously real life isn't a story. It's a very, it's very different than that. Everybody has their own individual experiences. Everybody, you can't, it's hard to view it in that way. I think of like, Oh, main character, supporting character, you know, like it's, but you know, again, people probably do think of it that way. A lot of times at the same time, like do think of themselves as like, they're the main, like, I would say you are the main character of your own life. You know, if there was a story of your life, you would be the main character. But so it depends on like what story is being told in a way. Right. Like, like if like it you know in a batman story batman is the main character but what if there was a story of like you know the batman story but all told from alfred's perspective maybe he could be a main character if you just reframed the story a little bit you know so it's like it depends on what viewpoint you're looking at it from like if i'm looking at it from my own perspective yeah i'm the main character because I, I, I'm there. I can see from my perspective, I'm with myself all the time. I'm, I'm experiencing everything through my eyes. So yeah, I am the main character from my perspective, but from uh, somebody else's perspective, I'm a supporting character, you know? So it, it I think it depends on your, the viewpoint, the, the way the story is framed. Now, one of the best times of year is, you know, Oscar season, the award season, we get to sit yeah. down, we've, we've reviewed all these films, you know, and you have these these awards for best supporting actor, best supporting actress, best actor, best actress, you know, and, you know, we give out awards to them, obviously, because we know how important their characters were to the main characters, just what we're talking about. But do you think when we, at the end of the day, and, I, and I'm guilty of this just as anybody else, at the end of the day, do we ever give enough credit to the people that support us? Do we ever go say thank you to our parents? Do we ever go say, you know, to, mm-hmm. you know, even just give, give our pets a hug, like anything else like that, that keeps us motivated throughout the course of the day? You know, so, I mean, these are just little things I'm trying to bring in because it relates so much to film. And we look back and we give all these credits to the supporting actors in these fantasy movies because we try to escape reality. But, you know, it is reality, too. I mean, are we as thankful? That's why I kind of go back to this. And it's a good topic, I think, to stay on for this podcast for a little bit here, just because like main character, supporting character, I feel like there's just a whole bunch of emotion along with psychological. Mm -hmm. And like you're pointing out, too, some of the things like. You know, everybody in their own mind thinks that they are at their, the main character. But how many times do we recognize our supporting characters? How many times do we want to admit that we're the supporting character? At the end of the day, if we don't feel accomplished in our life, you know, maybe our life, you know how everybody's born for a purpose and a reason and for a certain time and place. Um, written on my desk just over here, I actually made a note this day is uh, I made a I made a note the other day that said you were born for a time like this. Now, what does that mean? You know? So these are, but these are little things that like keep me thinking. And like, this is stuff that I think great storytellers always try to do, whether it's in real life or whether it's Mm -hmm. in their work of art. So I just wanted to uh, take a little bit of that question of, do you guys give enough uh, credit to your supporting characters in your life? Yeah. Um, I guess sometimes, sometimes not. (laughs) I I, I guess it depends. I don't know. Yeah. Because I mean, if you really think about it, um, in order to, let's say, like, go through and, and, and thank every, like, let's say, supporting character in your life uh, would be nearly impossible because there's just so many, right? Like, it's it's one of those things where it's like every person who enters your life, even for a moment, 
probably has some sort of impact on you um, that you just don't even realize. So it's, you know, it's hard to do that. But then obviously there's the more obvious ones, like, you know, your best friend is obviously, you know, a more notable one or your, your family, your, um, uh, you know, your, your significant other, if you have one, you know, like whatever it is, you know, that they're uh, the more, those ones, you know, you probably would give recognition to like, you know, you might at least, you know, be like, you know, like, thank you. I'm glad you're such a good friend to me, or I'm glad that you're, you know, whatever, whatever, whoever they are. But yeah, but then there's a lot of, a lot of those like little ones where it's like, you know, like, (laughs) yeah. So it, it is interesting to think about that. Like, just think about like, I guess that's one thing that's interesting to think about is like, no, everybody has somebody in their life that impacted them to make them who they are. Right. Nobody. It's like no person. What's the phrase? It's like, nobody is an Island or whatever, where it's like, nobody, you know, you're not independent by yourself. You're not a a thing or a person that exists on their own, independent of others. So you got to, it is interesting to like, you know, take that into account and think like it is largely because of all these other people in your life that you are where you are at now and you are the way you are now, you know? So yeah, it is an interesting thing to think about, but I don't know. Yeah. I, uh, much of the time I probably don't thank them enough, but I do like to think that, you know, there's an understanding of the appreciation but, uh, you know, like Ben said, there's some people that are, might impact you, you know, might not be there for a while, but do impact you. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we're talking about Bojack Horseman in the end of the second season. There's where, you know, the Bojack collapses at the top of the hill and the, you know, the guy that's been jogging in the background for the entire season, you know, comes up in his face and, you know, tells him, you know, says a few lines and leaves. That seems to really affect Bojack. Yeah, and that's the only time he's ever in the entire show. Mm-hmm. Right. But those those lines are extremely impactful for him. Yeah. Is there is there a pattern at all? Now this is this will trail off the end of this conversation here. But is yeah, there, is there a, is there a pattern where you know, and say you listen to a song, and like a song gives you goosebumps. Or like you, you watch this really intense scene, whether it's a death scene on TV, whether it's you know uh, somebody saving the day that puts you in a situation. Is there any is there any correlation between what gives you guys like the most goosebumps on screen? Is it is it is it like a death when you watch somebody like die on screen? Is it is it that happy music and like that John Williams score in the background? You know what what gives you guys, um, what makes I don't want to say this. What rises your emotion when you watch a film? I mean, there's no, for me, like, there's no one answer for that. I mean, it really depends on, it depends on a lot of things, I guess. It, you know, one, obviously, you know, like, it, it's it's not always a character death. It really depends on, like, how much I care for that character. You know, if I care for the character and the scenes are constructed in a way that really, like, make me care for that character, then when, yeah, when they die, yeah, it is going to really hit me emotionally right uh but if i didn't care i'll be like yeah whatever you know so it, it, i think it really depends or like yeah i don't know like there i for me it's like everything you know every you know if it's if the story's well constructed in a way where like when those big emotional moments happen whether that emotion is happiness fear sadness whatever like i i'll feel it if it's you know if they did the work to make it as impactful as it, it's uh, supposed to be. But it, it so th- I don't think there's any specific thing though, you know. I will say I do particularly enjoy like the I guess you could describe it as like when the underdog like, you know, finally gains the power to fight back. That so is like, a good one, yeah. In like the, you know, in animes and films or even in video games, like I really enjoy Persona 5. And in Persona 5, uh, each of the main characters eventually awakens to their persona, right? Hmm. 
and there's a specific song that plays every time that happens. And so by like the third time you have this Pavlovian response to that song that gets you already hyped up for it. And so, you know, you're already hyped up and then from the music and then everything starts coming together and they, you know, finally awaken to their persona and you can actually use them in a battle and fight the enemy in front of you. And it's, it's great. It's all really well set up. Hmm. But like all those, like that general idea and that general cliche, if you will, of just, you know, this person who was once powerless now can you know, fight back. I yeah. really always enjoyed those. And I think one, and one thing that probably makes those moments more impactful though, is like how the story is constructed as well in terms of like, mm-hmm. if you saw that, if you saw the character struggle to work hard to get to the point where they're able to fight back, you know, you kind of feel that like cathartic, like, yeah, like they earned this, you know, it's probably a part of it as well. Yeah. That's oh, a yeah, one. definitely. You know, this is going to put you on the spot and you can, by, by all means, take some time and answer this question and think about all the films you've seen, all the TV shows you've seen. But is there a scene that in any film, is there a scene that particularly like you can relate to? Is there the most relatable scene, like whether it's about your life or what, you know, th- your life and captures within the course of a scene? Is there any particular scene of any film that you would say that like it hits you when you watch it for the first time? It's like, yeah, that's that's my life. Like that character is living my life that is that is really hard um and it could be and even if you can't name this scene is there like um okay I'll, I'll put it this way um so i don't know if you ever watched the tv show teen wolf at all back on the mtv no. days back when mtv actually made good uh good tv shows and not just music mm-hmm. <laughs> um but there was a character which actually was played by tyler hecklin which was Derek hale and you know his he was somebody, and even though I was going through high school at that point in time, he was somebody as a late high schooler that kind of related, like his character related a lot to me on screen. So even if it's not a particular scene, do you have a character that, like, a character in any story that, like, relates to you the most? Um, I mean, you know what? I'll go with this one since we're actually since we're talking about it now, and on our podcast is BoJack Horseman. <laughs> Um, and there's, I actually have a video on my channel talking about like how I relate to him and not, in not in like, there's a lot of, you know, he's very different than me, obviously, you know, he's a much, he's, you know, ter- he's like, he does a lot of terrible things that I would never do. You know, there's a lot of, you know, he was, uh, he's like, he's like a, a famous washed up has been, you know, so there's, there's a lot of differences, but there were like certain moments where I was like, yeah, I, I can relate to the sort of like the psychological things going on with him um in a way like there's i'm trying to think of like specific examples but like there's you know just like stuff like he he's very self-deprecating for instance which i'm not saying i'm super self-deprecating but like i have those moments you know and i think everybody does where you're like you kind of like are like talking down to yourself in a way where you're like oh yeah you're not good enough or whatever and i'm like oh yeah i can relate to that or like there's there's just certain other like things you know i i don't know i i explained it a little better in my like in the one video i made um kind of it was it was sort of once the show ended i made a video kind of just reflecting back on my um experience with the show since i had started watching it and since it finished and like you know so i don't know that yeah, that's one I but i do think that Probably almost everybody can relate to some character in BoJack Horseman on some level, because it has a very wide spectrum of, like, uh, emotional difficulties. Like, BoJack, for instance, is, uh, there's a lot wrong with him, but I think part of it is, like, motivation issues. Yeah, that's Cause he's, that's that's a big one for me. You know, <laughs> something that doesn't you know work out for him, he'll just move past it instead of maybe going back to try again. And I think I relate to that aspect of quite a lot, or even just you know not starting something. I can relate to that. Yeah, yeah. But as for a specific character, I don't. Hmm. 
because like I said before, I I probably don't see myself as much of a main character, if I'm being honest. I kind of rather like the idea of being a supporting character. Because, you know, in going back to the Batman and Alfred analogy, Batman takes a lot. Batman is under a very extreme stress. Like, you know, I just recently watched The Dark Knight for the podcast. And, you know, one of the scenes, Batman came back and was stitching himself up. And, you know, that's not, you know, that's not something that would happen in real life. But an equivalent to, you know, whatever it is that I would go out to do instead of being a hero would be, there would be an equivalent, perhaps. But it's a hell of a lot easier to just be an Alfred. You know, just support Batman when he comes back and, you know, send him out, make sure he's ready to go, take care of the equipment, take care of the house. That's it. And there's also something to it being the voice of reason, too. A lot oh, of people, yeah, definitely. A lot of people think main characters are like, oh, well, you know, they make bad decisions in time, but they're like, oh, they're the, they're the superheroes or the alphas of the world. It's like, but, you know, you always need the person behind you. Even even when it comes to, like, marriages and stuff like that, what they always say behind every solid man is, like, a, a good woman. You ever hear that, like, saying mm-hmm. when it comes to that? So, I mean, it, it, it's true with all ends of the spectrum. Um, I do want to... We're going to transition away. Hopefully you guys actually enjoyed that uh, little brief talk we had. I know it was more mm-hmm. psychological and philosophical yeah, no, than anything else. Um, just something to take away, especially for the listeners out there. If you're ever contemplating, like if you're the main character and I, and I think one thing that I like that you said too, because I'm kind of the same way. I don't view myself as a main character. I mean, you yeah. can view yourself living your life. It's like, you gotta make decisions for you alone at the end of the day. Yeah. But you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always trying to be there to support somebody else. And I'm fine with just being the overall supporting character. You know, when the credits roll at the end of my life, I want to be the supporting character. That's fine. I have Mm -hmm. no deal with, I have no issue with that. I know that there's a lot of people that struggle sometimes thinking they need to be the main character. So it's good that, um, um, your cope. I, I, I keep wanting to say the man that must not be named, but I'll have to do the goodest boy. Um, I've been trying to come up with a better screen name, so you might not have to do that for long <laughs> yeah but I, I i'm glad that you said about being all right with that because like you both had different perspectives there even like answering that question and i think that i think that'll add a lot to the audience perspective listening out there um going through whatever they might be going through um yeah. now i do want to transition to probably my ending thoughts here or my ending question to you which is there anything brought up in hollywood and which is watching a film, you know, it's a, for me, I'm going to use this as an example, but is there anything that you wish that they would bring back or wish that they would end that was like a trend right now in the film industry or like video games? And I'll name this. You Have you guys watched um, the new Marvel shows like Loki and uh, Winter I Soldier? Saw, I saw WandaVision. I saw the first four episodes of Loki um, and I saw the first two episodes of Winter, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. But Okay. Have you? I have not seen any of that. Nope. <laughs> okay. Well, this isn't going to be a spoiler, but this is one of those things. Ben, do you realize that like when you click on an episode and it says like 40 minutes, you know, you get like 30 minutes in and then the the, uh, the credits start rolling and you don't know if there's going to be an end credit and the credits take like at least 10 minutes to get through and there might be an end credit scene at the end. Do you I watch mean, all that? I, if, if, I mean, the thing is, if you're on... Like if, if, you know, obviously, you know, when you're watching a Marvel movie in theaters, I usually will sit in the theater, wait for the credits to roll, you know, talk, you know, have a conversation with whoever I'm with while waiting for the end credit scene, you know, cause like, why not? It's a Marvel movie. But when it comes to like Disney plus shows, like, you know, you can skip ahead and find out if there's an end credit scene, you know, you don't have to wait through the credits, you know, you can like, you, you can, scroll. but is, isn't it just a nuisance to like, when they pitch it as, oh, we're having like six 45 minute episodes and the episode's yeah. only like 30 minutes. Yeah, then, it is. Like, it is you weird. have to scroll through and waste that time yeah. to press like the, the fast forward button to make yeah, sure it there's is, an end credit because they don't ever tell you. It is kind of annoying because like, what well, so when I watched WandaVision, I, I remember one of the episodes, like I, for, I think it might have been at the last episode. I don't remember it. Like I would, I, the, it, the credits started rolling. 
and I I just let them roll for whatever reason. Like I was doing something else and I didn't like click out of it or whatever. And then all of a sudden I noticed, I was like, wait, there's an end credit scene. Oh, and I was like, wait, is there an end credit scene in the other episodes? And I looked back and I was like, oh, there is. in some of the other episodes, it's like, really? I didn't even know. Cause like before I had just skipped ahead. Um, and then the other shows, I don't even know if there is in the other two shows. Cause like, I haven't even looked cause I was like, whatever. Uh, I didn't even really care to be honest. But because I mean, I feel like the end credit scenes aren't ever really that important. They're just, ooh, here's a hint at what might, what might come next. Ooh, you know, like. So I'm yeah. usually just like, whatever. Um, but I mean, at the same time, I don't really care that much, I guess. I don't know. It's it's kind of weird. Um, it's just it's just a pet peeve for me. But yeah, in order to spin this for video games, is there something that is there a pet peeve at all when you're playing video games like that? Is there a trends that you don't like that the video game industry is doing? Oh, there's probably tons. It's just a matter of remembering them. Because, I mean, like, there's little things like, you know, uh, the saying is show, don't tell. There's a ton of games that just will go like, oh, here, pop up tutorial and tell you how to do everything. It's just like, okay, you could have just like told me to hit a button and I could see what it did or something like that, you know? naturally introduce the mechanics of the game instead of just here's a tutorial okay look mm-hmm. at this yeah um, are you somebody that likes to play video games by by yourself like or do you hate the chat because this is one of the things that always drives me and my my other co-host jake here um that drives us insane a lot of the times is you know we're somebody that likes to sit down and play the single player campaign games yes and it seems like everything is trending towards online you gotta have internet access to play these campaign modes or like mm-hmm. you know these stories does that drive you insane because it does for us yeah it does uh i i think they've actually been getting better at that at least slightly because i think that started with the fortnite trend and huh. everyone started making fortnite-esque games with the battle royales but I think that's died down at least slightly. But yeah, that does really irk me. I'm going to ask both of you guys to whatever you want to say about the Waban podcast, what you have coming up next, where they can find you at, do your plugs. The Waban podcast is our podcast, W-A-B-A-N, uh, usually with an exclamation point at the end. You know, it's it's supposed to look like a... Like a... Waban! Comic, yeah, a comic book, like uh, whatever you call it, you know punch or something like that you know well ban pow you know that kind of thing um which is why our logo looks like that uh is in that style but yeah no uh there's multiple places you can listen to it on you can listen to it on my youtube channel which is nim tv that's n-i-m tv you can go on there uh there's different like playlists actually on there to separate the different like there's one playlist that has all episodes of the podcast. There's one specifically for the avatar discussion, one for all movie discussions, one for guest episodes. And now there's one for Bojack Horseman discussions. So you can kind of like separate it out if you want like a specific, specific episodes. Um, also, uh, you can find the podcast on some audio platforms, which I did say this at the beginning, but I'll go through it again. Anchor, you can find it. You can find it on Breaker, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Radio Public, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Uh, so if you search Waban on any of those, you should be able to find it. Um, whichever uh, platform works best for you. There's new episodes of Waban every Saturday at noon Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so yeah, that's, you know. So far, we've kept up with that schedule, and we should be able to keep going. So, yeah, we're we're about to do the 19th episode, I believe. So we're getting close to 20. So that's that's exciting. Um, but, yeah, so like I said earlier, it's, it's mostly TV shows, movies. Um, so far, we've only had two guest episodes, but we would we'll, – we'll, we'll probably do more. Um, but, yeah, and the, the TV shows we've done so far. So right now, we're doing BoJack Horseman. We just finished talking about season two. Um, so that's our plan for the future. And as far as movies go, I mean, we're going to talk about the dark Knight in the very next episode or, well, that might be out by the time this episode of your podcast is out. I really don't know. Uh, but, um, yeah, so we're that, and then beyond that, we don't know what other movies or guests we're going to have yet. And yeah, so the only thing we know right now, as far as what's coming up with the podcast is Bojack Horseman and the dark Knight. 
um, and then whatever else we already have that you can also listen to it. So thanks everybody for watching the Hope Speaks podcast here on the Shoot of Hope channel. You can check us out, like I said at the beginning of the podcast, on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify. You can go look, watch us on YouTube. And you can also go check out our website. Our website has a whole catalog of anything you want to uh, watch. It's www.shieldofhopeproductions.com. Be sure to check all that out. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we will see you on the next episode.